Okay, so firstly, it's a privilege for me to be here with all of these heroes. So i uh, just like to say that firstly. And I will go through some slightly technical stuff, but not too heavy. Some heart disease realities and explain the scan and its importance. Just a reminder, yes, it's through David and his charity, the IHDA. David has invested millions in trying to get the message out in the power of the calcium scan to identify those who are at risk. Because if we don't identify them, we can't help to fix them and to prevent premature heart attacks. Uh, I myself work as Chief Program Officer in the IHDA and I mostly travel around the world. I give lectures, I give talks on metabolism and the fixes for heart disease and other chronic disease. And I also, of course, describe the scan as I'm about to do now to let people uh, know about it. So recently I have been invited to the British Association for Cardiovascular Prevention to speak uh, at their conference and also Irish cardiovascular groups. So we're getting out to the grassroots with the knowledge, but we're also focusing on getting out to the medical fraternity as well, because the scan is not used nearly as much as it should be, even within the world of medicine. So the third Sunday, or the ninth decade, so you guys, 28 years ago, you fought the game of your life to get there and win. And you put in a lot, effort, knowledge and skill, vigilance, dedication to task, perseverance, huge work to get there. And setbacks can happen, I'm sure there were injuries, there were challenges you overcame. But what about the game of your life? So it's going to require similar kind of dedication and attention to detail and knowledge about what's crucial to prevent disease and to get to your 80s and 90s in good shape, engaged with life, and ideally die in your sleep, as they say, but not spend the last 20 years with chronic debilitating disease. So just looking here at health span, not just lifespan, but health span is how long you live while remaining vital, energetic, and engaging with life, right? Because you might live a very long time with a very poor uh, quality of life. So around 50% plus of people get into their 70s with good health. I would suggest that people who make the right nutritional and lifestyle decisions can push that curve of health span right out to the right and get a lot more value from their life later on. And the people who make the wrong decisions in nutrition and lifestyle primarily, they will pull back towards being ill in their 60s and not being able to get, engage in life. So there's a huge variability depending on the choices you make and how hard you work. We mostly bust our ass in the early part of our life to get the money and resources to enjoy the later time. I think that's true for most. And there's a huge amount to play for there. Socializing, exercise, holidays, travel, getting to see the grandchildren grow up and getting to be part of their development, you know, and not missing out on, on that value. I'll say one thing on genetics because I constantly hear, oh, well, I've bad genetics or bad history. The genetics loads the gun, but your lifestyle and your nutrition pulls the trigger. And briefly, you can have bad genetics and really do well with your lifestyle and nutritional focus and live long and strong. Or you can have quite good genetics, do all the wrong things and go out early. So it's not really the genetics, that's just a susceptibility to disease. It's what you do with your life that decides where it ends. In certain cases, there's very strong genetic problems, but in general, it's not a reason. So I'm going to show a short clip here and it's just to give an overview of the calcium scan from some of the world's top experts. So to hear it from them rather than me. Every minute of every day, somebody dies of a heart attack in America. It's the nation's biggest killer. More frightening than that is that a huge number of the people who die drop dead without any warning they've got heart disease. Two thirds of men and half of all women, the first sign or symptom is that they have a heart attack or die. You don't know you have it until, until you're dead. And it doesn't have to be that way. Heart attacks and strokes are absolutely preventable. The science is the slam dunk. So you just put your head there and your feet down yep. here and that slides the patient into the scanner. So these are the coronary arteries here. 
In the beginning, um, I think everybody was extremely interested. And everybody would say, well, what's that white stuff that's, that I see there? And I said, well, that's calcium in the coronary arteries. Calcium, a crucial ingredient in our bones and just what you don't want in your heart. The calcium is actually part of the healing process. One of the body's natural defense mechanisms is to put down calcium to try to heal this sort of bubble. It doesn't occur there unless there is plaque there. Before the advent of Doug's ray gun, doctors had to use a complicated formula dreamt up at Harvard in the 50s to work out somebody's risk of heart attack. Adding together weight, age, lifestyle, cholesterol, and then guess. You could have all the risk factors and not have any coronary disease. You could have none of the risk factors and have coronary disease. But if you have a coronary scan and you see calcium, you know you have disease. It's not a risk factor. It is looking at the disease, part of the disease process. Look, what are your alternatives? You say to a person, well, you're at low risk, and then if the patient dies, oh, I was wrong, sorry. Why guess? Why base your decision on a score derived from a compilation of risk factors when you can look directly at the heart and see how much plaque there is there? We know that it identifies high-risk patients. We know that treating high-risk patients saves lives. Therefore, identification of the high-risk patient will save lives. Breathe in. Hold your breath. The scores go uh, zero. It can go as high as four or 5,000. So I call it mild, uh, zero, mild, moderate, extensive, and oh my god. Well, how many lives do you think would have been saved if we'd done it in 1990, um, what we're doing now in 2013? And the answer is? A lot. And that's the gist of it for sure. If we use this scan widely for middle risk people and we identified the truly high risk versus low risk, we could treat the high risk and we know the treatments work. So the biggest challenge is atherosclerosis, so a biggish word. And that's the process progressively destroys your arteries and most humans get it at some stage in life. But briefly, if uh, you have a young guy here, the inner wall of the blood vessels, the arteries, is usually healthy and clean. And then a middle-aged person, many will have the beginnings of atheroma and they're like pustules or boils on the inner wall of the artery. And it's progressive, so if you keep pushing this disease process, the atheroma will get more uh, frequent, there will be more of them, and your body will bring in calcium to try and save them from bursting, to try and stop them killing you. So the calcium's a protective mechanism. But if you keep pushing the process, you'll get more and more, you'll get breakouts, little blockages, you may have no symptoms. Your doctor may think you're in great shape, and so may you, but this is going on. And if you continue to push it, eventually a large breakout, a blockage of flow of blood to the heart, and you go down with the big one. And wouldn't it be great if you could go back 10 or 20 years and actually look at where you were and look and see that you had high calcification and therefore had massive risk and put in the fixes for that problem in time. And what would happen is you would get stabilization. So the calcium would not go away, your score would stay more stable, not growing so much, and your arteries would be vastly safer if you took action. And you could avoid that premature heart attack and maybe get 10 or 20 more years, right? To spend with the grandchildren or whatever you decide to do. So to save the most at risk, you have to find them. In my world of engineering, if you don't measure it, it don't get fixed. And I was as stunned as David when I learned about this many years ago, that it's not being used. It's crazy. So on the left, we have a scan there, a green circle, person with zero calcium. They're at very low risk. On the right, we have someone maybe four or 500. They may be 10 or 20 times more likely to have a heart attack than the person on the left. It's a cheap scan. It's covered by insurance in Ireland now. You might hear about radiation. It's one millisievert. I won't get into details. That is a theoretical increase of cancer risk by one in 20,000. And it's only theoretical. 
So that's an argument that's used that's irrelevant in my mind. And all astronauts and presidents must get this CAC scan. So that'll tell you something, right? They must get it because they're important. But in my mind and David's mind, everyone's important, not just President Trump or whoever. So we have here the, all the data is the same from myriad human studies. A zero scoring middle-aged person has a very small chance of a heart event in the following 10 years. A medium scoring person may have 10 times the risk, not twice or three times. And a very high scoring person can have 20 to 25 times the risk of a zero scorer. David got this high score of 906 seven years ago and was furious when he found out that this scan is not being used. It saved his life, enabled him to take action, right? But what about everyone else? So he put several million into projects in IHDA to get the message out and that's what we're here about tonight. Of the foreseeable coronary events or heart attacks that are predicted by measurements in our world, this study shows that risk factors, you know, blood risk factors, or the calcification scan predicts a little over half. But only the calcification scan predicts this chunk of the pie. So if you think of millions of heart attacks around the world and only the calcification scan can predict a third of them or more, it shows you how many lives could be prolonged and people saved by taking action. Quick one on age, uh, you of course have a much higher risk in the next 10 years of having a heart attack as you get much older. Age is the biggest risk factor. You know, we, we decay with time. We're not like wine. But if we forget that reality and we look at scanning all the people in this large study, the zero scoring people had a really low risk in the next 10 years, whether they were 50 or 80, because the scan sees the disease. Medium scoring people, same, and high scoring people, all at the same risk, no matter what age they were. And just to emphasize it, a middle-aged or 50-year-old man with a high score is at maybe 20 times the risk in the next 10 years of a heart attack as an 80-year-old with a low score. So hopefully you can realize the scan is so powerful of identifying who needs treatment. The key is to stop progression, as I mentioned. So in this study, and many say the same thing, a per, a people with a high starting score, so they're high risk, right? They have high disease. And over five years, they tracked them, the ones that increased more than 15% per year in calcium, so they were progressing fast. It was a 50% heart attack rate in that group. Now that's not even Russian roulette, that's double barrel shotgun, one trigger, right? 50%. The people with the same high starting score at the same theoretical risk, but over the five years when they tracked them, they had managed to bring down their increase per year to below 15% and stabilize, as I showed you earlier. Was it lower for those people? Yeah, it was lower they were 3%. So those high scoring people had the same rate of heart attacks as very low scoring people, but they stopped the progression. So if you know you have the disease, you can take action. Versus risk factors, I'll show the CAC scores now. I don't have the names, I just have the numbers. But to give you an idea, pretty much everyone in your group was considered to be fairly healthy and fine or in general. Sure enough, around half the group nearly had zero scores, which is great in middle age, it's excellent. But these people had significant scores, you know, from quite low through to very significant. And then these people had very high scores, right? These people who are over 100, right? The, the, I, the, this, this uh, just sorry, this is the reality out there, even for people who appear to be fine. Remember David at 52 was, was running four times a week. Super fit, passing treadmills, top 10% of fitness for his age. The doctors used the word bulletproof, right? And he had 906 with fully blocked main artery and two more blocked arteries. Okay, so if you don't scan, you don't know, and then that's the key point. But once you know, you can intervene with the appropriate medications, and also there is diet and lifestyle that's very important. I'll touch on that at the end. 
So versus the risk factors, cholesterol, um, we see here for the people with much higher scores, up to 1200, we don't have the 3200 there, each person is a blue dot. What's the cholesterol tell you? Don't have to be an engineer, it tells you nothing. The people with high scores have the same cholesterol as the people with no disease, right? LDL bad cholesterol, same story. HDL good cholesterol, which is usually a bit better, no. Triglycerides, another measure from your cholesterol panel. It usually trends higher and it looks like it here for people with high disease, but then you've got two high guys there with, with triglycerides, fine. The HbA1c is a measure of blood glucose, and I'm going to tell you in a moment, that's very important. But still, even though the higher scores have a trend towards essentially diabetes up at this layer, it still doesn't really tell you. There's people up over the 40 here as well. So it still fails. And David's HbA1c was well in range in all his tests, right, with massive disease. So what drives the progression? On the left, we have Western white men in a very large study. And you can see that the, the worst 25% of calcifiers get massive scores into the thousands as they go up into their 50s and 60s. This is the reality in the West for reasons I won't get into. 40% of all heart attacks occur in the top 10% of calcifiers. That's just the way it works. Semaine men, other side of the world, are also humans, same as us. They get almost no calcification. They have no heart attacks. And Catavans, same thing. No calcification, no heart attacks. It's not genetics, right? It's not cholesterol that they've got an advantage in. It's low insulin, low blood glucose, no diabetic physiology, no metabolic syndrome. You can Google these terms later. No blood pressure. It doesn't rise with age, partially because of all this. And they've no central obesity and dangerous belly and organ fat. So they are eating and living in a way that their machine just keeps working. Okay? And this, I won't go into detail, but this is my short list of the primary drivers of heart disease. And in fairness, cholesterol doesn't quite even make it in there because there's too much else going on. And hyperinsulin, insulin resistance, just remember that term and Google it later, high blood glucose and spikes in your blood glucose after you eat meals. That's the epicenter of heart disease. Not the only cause, but that's more important than any other single one. It's not just cardiovascular disease. I won't read out these diseases, but I will tell you when you do the research, the iceberg of hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance and blood glucose issues underpins a lot of these diseases. And it's a huge deal. We don't have time today to explain it, but there's a lot of free videos on YouTube, which will. Dietary drivers, very briefly, the bad foods are refined carbohydrates and sugars. So breads, pastas, bagels, cereal bars, cereals, these are all pure sugar. There's nothing really in there but sugar, essentially, unless they add nutrients. Vegetable oils, which are industrial seed oils, we were told they were heart healthy. Sorry, guys, they are not. And they are a massive problem. And the margarines and trans fats. Ultra-processed foods are stuffed with refined carb sugars and industrial vegetable oils. 70% of our supermarket now is ultra-processed food. We don't even know we're eating it, but it's largely a chronic poison, right? And most people are eating it mostly. So simply, you have to remove that crap from your diet, especially if you have heart disease, like immediately. The food you will eat more so will be real ancestral human foods from before we actually had any heart disease worth a toss, right? 150 years ago. Ask yourself everything you eat. Did my great-grandfather or great-grandmother eat this as a normal food? And the answer is no, you've got to start asking questions, unfortunately. So meats are fine in moderate, don't go crazy. Eggs, fish, butter's fine, no problem. Cheeses, olives, avocados. These are quite fatty foods. And due to an enormous mistake in the 60s and 70s, people went against fatty foods. The irony is they attacked ancestral healthy foods and they brought this crap into the world. And that's what's caused our epidemics. So you want to go for that kind of food? And exercise as well. One of the best things about exercise is it helps with insulin resistance and blood glucose. So that's actually one of the mechanisms, just to tie it back to what I said.
So I'm going to show a brief video now, three minutes of David's story, and it's just a good segue into David having a few words with you guys. So thank you. After sewing up a big business deal in the US, Irish entrepreneur David Bobbitt went to have a medical checkup. Part of it, a coronary artery scan. He had the shock of his life. My arteries were that of an 86 year old. So here is a 51 year old who exercises every day, is careful what they eat. My parents lived into the 80s. I'd done all of the things you were supposed to do to be healthy. The following day, I had to go in to do an angiogram where they found um, I had one totally blocked artery. I had another artery that was 70% blocked and I had a huge level of disease right throughout my, 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 my system. The shock of it, the shock of suddenly going from one day feeling absolutely perfect with no reasons of any issue at all to a situation that 75 out of 100 people at your level of calcification is going to uh, either be dead or have a heart attack in the next 10 years. Today, he's going to be scanned again. Told he could die at any moment, he spent the last two years on the most punishing of fitness and food regimes. I've done everything I can do, and the score will be the score. My mathematical mind says it was 900. 1100 will be, will be okay. 1,200 will be reasonable, and, and over 1,200 score will be very disappointing. Remember, leave your arms above your head for the entire test. And so this is good news. Yeah, I, 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 I'm very happy with that. I'm very happy yeah. with that, because I've worked, I've, you wouldn't want to believe how hard I've worked. Uh, I've really worked on everything. The disease has barely advanced. There's real hope he can make it. The fact that, that I, I, I could be around like any father wants to be with his kids. The fact that I was, my, my daughters, that I, just so special that, that I, I would be there. Um, when they got married or when they, they were that bit older, that I'd see my grandchildren. That, that, that gave me hope. That really was what really was, was so important, why I wanted to fight this as hard as I did. Without the shock of that first scan, David might not have changed his life around, might not have been here today for his family. But now the hope he has can be shared by millions. The tenacity and persistence that served David so well in growing his successful business brought him to a conclusion that he's determined to tell everyone about. Heart attacks need not happen. They're caused by a disease, and you either have that disease or you don't. This requires a little bit of funding to get the message out there. and. I just think I have a responsibility. You know, there's right and there's wrong, and there's interest groups, and I know that. So it's a real battle. Everything I've ever done in my life, whether I'm a 24 handicapper or 20, I will do the best I can in every shot I play. And that's just the way I am. The only thing that really matters is that people have information that they have then the opportunity to manage themselves. And that's the problem with heart disease. It's no different than cancer. You can't say to women, well, you know, you, 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 you aren't overweight, but you can have a disease. And uh, therefore, identifying a disease early leads to much better analysis. And many people, I'm not going to go into individuals or whatever, but I know there's some of these people here today who are, are very thankful to what has been done. But they, as I say, only represent every county in Ireland, every individual. So um, I, I, it's not my story. I'm not the person who wants to be here telling this 
um, I just want to be able to ensure that people have the right to this information. And, um, and that's for what it is. We will then go to go to the much more entertaining uh, part of the evening and then for you guys to bring back the memories and enjoy your time from that 1991 period of time uh, and really enjoy it. And thank you all for coming here this evening.